So before we begin today's video, there's something else that I wanted to look at. After going through my footage of the previous video, I think I'm starting to get a fix on what was going wrong at a certain point during the labyrinth. It all starts with me throwing myself into this enemy from the launcher, and then no knockback happened. What I'm thinking is that something happened to my hitbox when this happened. The game probably didn't know how to handle this hit because I threw myself into it from a launcher, and so my hitbox got screwed up, somehow. The next point of notice here is in the very next room when I'm attacking this enemy and I'm where my hair attack did not connect with the enemy and I clearly should have gotten hit here, but I didn't take damage. I didn't notice this at the time, but yeah, I'm pretty sure I should have taken a hit here. The next one was a little more obvious when the cannonball fell on top of me and then I didn't take any damage. And then finally there was this room where I couldn't connect with the launcher and continue the game. So yeah, I'm starting to think that when I launched myself into that enemy in the large room, something happened to my hitbox and I couldn't interact with the environment properly anymore. So yeah, I think that's what went wrong in that video, and that's how I ended up uh, glitching the game. And so I had to kill myself in order to fix it. And even if I did make it to that other launcher across the spikes, it wouldn't have mattered because I wouldn't have connected with it. But that's my theory anyway. Anyway, on with the show. Hey folks, it's The Red, and welcome back to Let's Play Shantae. Risky just got away with all four of the stones, and now we need to go and track her down at her hideout. Shantae thinks to herself that she needs to go to, uh... Scuttle Town and go talk to Mimic, but we have a few errands that we need to run first. Namely, going around collecting all the rest of the collectibles in the game. Now that we have the Harpy transformation, there's no point on this map that we can't reach. Don't fly too high or you'll go straight into the uh, spikes over your head, and that's no good for anybody. What is good for somebody is a heart holder. Now we're up to an 8-point life bar, and we're going to keep that gravy train rolling as we go along and collect all the rest of the optional collectibles in the game. So, we're gonna head back over in this direction and drop off our warp squids. Once again, don't fly too high. You really want to be careful in a place called Mount Pointy. Because instant death spikes everywhere. And we'll just trek our way through the Eagle Wasteland real quick. Nice hit detection. <laughs> Seriously, it just went right through me. It's like I'm not even there. Okay. <laughs> Is it possible that I play this game a little too recklessly? Nah. Anyway, we are now back at Bandit Town. And I'm going to go in and drop off my warp squids real quick. And with that, we now have a dance in order to return to Bandit Town. I don't know that I'm going to be making much use of it, but it's there in case, and for 100% completion, I guess. However you want to look at it. And I guess we'll go ahead and bathe. Always a good idea to go out with full health. And spin dry! <laughs> Okay, onward we go. Now, to get to the next heart holder, and the rest of the goodies that we need to get, we need to do some warping. That's not the right dance. There we go. Okay, and now we are at Oasis Town. And as long as I'm here, I might as well pick up a few supplies that we're going to need. 
I didn't want to buy him back in Bandit Town because, like I said, the prices there are a bit higher. And I don't appreciate that. Okay, so this time we're going to need some twin mints. And we're going to need to press the correct button. Right. Twin mints. These will allow you to become... This will allow you to create a double of yourself, and it, in turn, doubles your attack power. Guess I'm going to take a couple of exit candies as well. I don't know if I ever mentioned this yet, but the exit candies can be used to bring you to the entrance of the labyrinth. Kind of like an escape rope from Pokémon. Anyway, we should be able to see these items in action fairly soon as we continue our running. Alright, so with that we can now move on to our next point of interest. And now for the top reason I like the Harpy form. Traveling the overworld is so much easier because now you can command the skies and there's very little to get in your way. Most of the enemies that you encounter during this area is mainly just like those little bats or whatever. But I don't usually like to fly too high because, because of the bats. And until we get the Harpy's talisman that will allow us to do an attack, we couldn't really do anything about them even if we wanted to. Either way, you want to go above the enemies, but not too far up that you can't see the ground, because it's good to know where you're going. Well, you're just going to kind of rush through this area. And now, off to the left. Go ahead and get back into a harpy. And it's off to the skies. And yes, you can fly above the screen. Although I don't think you can do that on all screens. There might be a invisible ceiling there at other points. Anyway, we're back in the men's desert. And if we fly all the way up here, we'll find a platform with another heart holder. Kind of obscurely placed, I mean, it's just, like, out here in the middle of nowhere. You wouldn't find that thing unless you were looking for it. Unless you were really looking for it, and you knew where it was, and whatnot. But, let's go ahead and fly back to the labyrinth, because we have some unfinished business here. Here in the Golem Mine. Should almost say, okay, here we are. Okay, so there's a warp squid here that we need to go ahead and pick up. I'll go ahead and jump over to where that is. Right, so here we are in the room with the elephant that we had to... The elephant statue that we had to ram and it made these uh, stalactites fall into the lava and then we had to jump across in order to advance. But if we fly up here, we find a warp squid. And with that, the Golem Mine is now 100% completed. Let's go ahead and see what the... Let's go ahead and use one of our exit candies. And it will automatically warp us to the entrance of the mine. Very handy item to have. And with that, let's go ahead and jump to the next labyrinth with a warp squid that we need to collect. Yeah, we're going to be doing a lot of jump cuts in this part. I'll see you in a minute. Okay, we are back outside of the Dribble Fountain, where we got our first stone tablet. And there was a uh, Warp Squid fairly early on that we could not get to. But we're going to go ahead and grab it now. Another quick drop here. Might as well pick up a few gems while we're at it. And here's the room with the Warp Squid. We'll go ahead and do our transformation. You could also use the spider to climb along that little wooden background there. But I find it easier to just come back for this as a harpy. 
I didn't bother getting an exit candy for this labyrinth because we didn't have to go very far in to get it. But with that, I do believe we saw a jar at the top of this waterfall, so let's fly up here and get that. It's another one-up, one that you can't get to until you have the Harpy transformation. Pretty interesting. Anyway, jump cut to the next labyrinth. And here we are at the Cackle Mound, the last of the labyrinths that we need to visit, and actually the third one that we visited in the game. And here is where we will obtain our final Warp Squid. Upon collecting this one, we will be able to set up a warp point back to the zombie caravan. How appropriate that this will be the last one we get it from. And again, we don't need to go too far, but getting back from here would be a little difficult. Alright, here we are at the big slide room. Go all the way down, and then switch over to a harpy. And we're going to go back up the slide. But not up the slide itself, but over here. Which is where the warp squid is. And with that, we have now obtained every warp squid in the game. Once we find the zombie caravan, we'll drop them off there. But for now, more running to do! And here we are at the zombie caravan, as we found it at the end of the... Ghost Forest. Very convenient, because now we can drop off our warp squids. Alright, and now with that, we have every warping dance available in the game. And most importantly, we can now get to the zombie caravan at any time we like and take advantage of the item shop's good prices. I will definitely be coming back later. Right before we're ready to go pursue Risky properly. But for now, it's time to go enter the one area of the overworld that we have not yet explored, and that is right here, the Archer Woods. As you might guess, there are archers here. As long as you keep hitting them, they don't shoot at you. And if they do shoot at you, well, watch out. But there's a more important thing that you need to watch out for around here, and that will be coming up in just a moment. Hit these little totem poles to shrink them down to the ground, and hit them in the head to finish them off. Now, the slides in this particular area, as you can see, would drop you straight into a bottomless pit, so you definitely want to watch out for this. Jump over them. Big jumps will get you across. And down I go. Lesson learned, folks. Don't step on them. Now let's see if I can get across here without dying again. <laughs> Very small windows of opportunity to jump over those holes. And jump up there. There we go. They are some pretty tricky jumps, so do be mindful of your footing in this area. Thankfully, you don't have much of a reason to go in this direction. Unless you followed Mimic's bad advice when you were first trying to get to Mount Pointy. But more on that momentarily. Let's go down this ladder where we're going to find some sort of clown child. I don't even know what this thing is. I love watching cute girls dance! The more the better! And the more the better indeed, because this is where we need to make use of our twin mints. Use this to transform yourself to make a double of yourself, and then just start doing some random dances.
If you can't see the second version of me, well, that's just the uh, recording. Hmm. Guess I need to do a little more dancing. And finally, I transform into a monkey, and that finally makes him disappear. I guess you have to go into any sort of transformation to make him fly up into the spikes. <laughs> uh, th that is something. But for getting him out of the way, we get the last of the heart holders, and now we have the maximum health bar of 10 hearts. And right now, I could really use some hearts. I'll have to keep an eye out for those. Anyway, let's continue on our route. For record purposes. Not a whole lot going on here in the Archer Woods, but there is this rather large wall that would require the spider form to get across, or a harpy if you have it already. But the ideal way to get across is to just walk along the wall. But it basically sets it up so that you won't get to this area without first completing the, uh, Cackle Mound. It's also not a particularly long area, and this puts us out at in the, uh, snowy area of Mount Pointy. We'll encounter so, a few different enemies here. But they're not too difficult to handle here, either. Thanks to the ice physics that don't affect me for some reason. Oh, come on out, you. I haven't actually beaten one of those yet. There we go. And yeah, we have slides here as well. It's easier to get through here as a monkey. And here we are at the save guy, and this is about as far as we can go. Why do I say that? I mean, we could ascend this wall, right? Well, let's just assume we followed Mimic's advice and came here from the west, like he said. Let me go ahead and, well, first of all, use one of my vials, because I just realized I'm very low on health. But now we can see just how many hearts this thing can fill. Okay. Five and a half, it looks like. That's a weird number, but okay. There you have it. So anyway, assuming that we don't have the Harpy ability, which is what you would need to get over this mountain, let's go ahead and see if we can get over it with our transformations that we would have at this point. So here comes Monkey Form, up the wall. Got a bit of a dangerous jump here, but it is passable. But we get about this far up before the slide just throws us back down. So yeah. If you come here following Mimic's advice, you're not actually going to make it up, and then you'll have to track all the way back, if you don't have any of the warping dances, and go through all of this again to come through the proper way. Thanks, Mimic, but I'm sure you won't make that mistake again. <laughs> uh... Anyway, we've got more things to take care of, so here comes another jump cut. Let's go find us some talisman. Okay, so our first talisman comes to us in the mud bog. Uh, of course there would be one here. And frankly, I don't feel like dealing with these enemies, so let's just fly directly above them, because nothing bad could be found in the sky. Holy crap, what is that? <laughs> that was my first reaction to seeing one of these things. Seriously, I don't know what it is. Looks like some sort of cross between a mosquito and an elephant. It's, it's creepy as hell, and they're also durable. 
as hell. And I would sooner just avoid them altogether than to try and engage them. Especially not with the Harpy's later ability, and that did not look like a hit. Ugh. Let's just get what we came for and get out of here. Because frankly, I don't like this place. <laughs> but you should already know that. Anyway, here's our transformation. Uh, or no, uh, the talisman. It seems to be on top of what looks like a skewered bug. Gross. And, yeah. <laughs> it's daytime now, and it still looks like it's night in the background. That's the mud bug for you. Anyway, we now have the spider venom. Which will allow us to attack in spider form, and let's go ahead and check this out. If you ask me, this talisman justifies the spider's existence, even after you've obtained the harpy ability. Let's go down and try it out. Oh yeah. <laughs> A free projectile. I like it. <laughs> I do enjoy the spider's venom ability. Alright, next up, it's time to go for the other talisman. And that's nice and early, right next to Scuttletown, in fact. We'll fly our way up here. And go straight into a bat, why not? <laughs> and here it is! This must be the Harpy Talon! It will allow me to attack in Harpy form. And unlike the Spider Venom that we just found earlier, I don't particularly care for this attack. It's pretty similar to the Monkeys. You basically now have a clawing attack. You can use it while flying as well. And use it to take out flying enemies. The problem is, I have such a hard time connecting hits with it, that I just don't think it's a very reliable attack. I would rather attack as an elephant a monkey or a spider. Really, the spider is probably the best choice out of all the three now. Because, hey, free projectiles. See, right now I was just pressing B and I wasn't connecting a hit. And that was just mean. Anyway, yeah, that was the... There's your talent attack. I'm gonna go head on back to Scuttletown and heal up before we uh, start making our way to the next thing. Let's see, we have all of the heart holders and all of the talismans, which means, I guess now it's time to... Oh, and we've collected all the warp squids as well, so... Only one thing left that I need to show, and I'll take care of that in just a moment. After a quick bath. Ah, A beautiful, full, ten heart life bar. Is good. Alright, with that, it's time to go after the Fireflies and find out what that secret is in Watertown. Let's go ahead and run a montage of this, shall we? Success has been had, as I have now obtained all 12 of the Fireflies, which means now we can finally go to the Firefly Shrine in Watertown and see what is on that piece of paper that we could only so faintly see. Hey! I've got enough Fireflies to light these... to light up these runes! And with that, we've learned the last dance. It's not a transformation, even though it's on the transformation side. Wow, I can use this dance to swap 10 gems for every heart that needs refilling. Very nice. Well, she pretty much explains exactly what it's for, but I'll still show it in action right now. So let's head on back out there. 
And, uh, let me just check that dance again. Down, up, A. Okay. So here we go. And it swaps out 50 gems for a full health bar, which is quite nice indeed. The thing is, you would need to be able to be in a position where you could refill your life bar without being attacked at the same time, which means boss fights might be out of the question if you wanted to make use of this. And just as well, this is probably something that would have been pretty useful earlier in the game, but I could not have gotten all the fireflies earlier in the game without the harpy ability for at least one of them. And that's why collecting the fireflies is best saved for the end of the game. So yeah, we have that now, and with that, all the optional collectibles are now out of the way. Which means now, I can probably go ahead and do one more jump cut to do some money grinding and obtain all the items I want to bring to the final area. So, for one last time, I'll see you in a moment. Okay, with all the extra stuff out of the way, it's time to advance the plot. Onward to Scuttletown. Alright, Mimic, where should we go? Risky has all four stones? This is a disaster! Our only chance now is to locate Risky's hideout and stop her before it's too late! Maybe if you fly to the highest point, you can get a better view of the land. It's the only hope we have left, so get to it! Holy cryptic advice! Once again, Mimic! Now, when he tells you to go to the highest point on the map, where do you think he's talking about? Given that you just came back from Mount Pointy, you might think that you need to go there, because... Well, what part of the map is farther north? But no, that's not actually where you go. Or maybe that's just me being a derp, but I really thought that's where I had to go after all this madness. But no, you actually have to go back to Oasis Town. And then head over in this direction, become a harpy, and then fly up here above in the ladies desert and then you will find an upside down pyramid with a telescope on it this is the quote unquote highest point of which he was speaking so you walk up to the telescope and talk to it so this must be the legendary spy scope I keep hearing about from no one who goes there eek <laughs> Yeah, who the heck is saying that? What was that? Know that if you wish to look through me, I must look first look through you! Come again? I certainly hope you mean through my heart or soul or something. <laughs> Innuendo. Of course that's what I mean! Here now! I see that you wish only to save a peaceful people from a horrible fate at the hands of evil! Look through my eyepiece and choose your destination! No need to shout. I guess I've got nothing to lose, except my eardrums. Let's see. Over there on Suddenly Daytime Island! That's it! Risky must be hiding out on that island! By my power, I will send you there! Erm, um, okay. But if you send me there by magic, how will I get back? Simply stand in my light, and you will be returned! Simple enough, I would say. And so we are going to warp over to the island. What is this place? It looks like an enormous Tinkerbat factory! If an entire island of Tinkerbats has been exploring steam technology, I'd better be ready for anything. Steam, the most technologically advanced element known to man. And yeah, it's daytime here for some reason, despite it just being night. Anyway, here we are at the final stage, and here is where we're going to call it a video. 
we've got one more to go. It's time to take the fight all the way to Risky Boots, and we shall do so next time. See you then!